This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here with part two of my ongoing video series on using the pen tool in Photoshop. In today's video, we're going to use the pen tool to create straight line paths only, which are the simplest but the best place to start learning how the pen tool works. We're going to be building on the foundation of knowledge that we started last week in part one. If you're new to paths or if you're new to the pen tool in Photoshop, you may want to go back and review the first episode before picking up with this video. So today we're going to use the pen tool and we're going to use it to create a rectangular path around this meter in the lower left corner of this document. We're going to mask this out from the rest of the layer. We're choosing this meter because it has the simplest shape. It's a simple rectangle or possibly a square. It has no rounded corners like this one does, and it's not round like this one, so it should be a relatively straightforward task. And you may think to yourself, well, I could use the polygonal lasso tool or maybe the rectangular marquee tool to select this meter. And you'd probably be correct. But we're here today to learn how the pen tool works and the concepts and techniques that we're going to learn today with this easy example will carry us through into the more advanced lessons. So this is an important starting point. To begin, I'm going to go ahead and select the pen tool, which is here in the tool panel just above the type tool. If I click and hold, notice that there are several varieties of pen tool, and we're going to use the regular pen tool here at the top of the list. I'm also going to bring the paths panel out here onto the canvas so that we can keep it close at hand and monitor what we're doing as we work. Now, if you followed along in part one of this series, you may have opened this menu and changed the panel options to show a large thumbnail. Here's a shortcut in case you didn't do that. Just right click anywhere here in the paths panel and choose large and you'll get large thumbnails. The other thing we need to do in preparation as we learned in part one is to make sure the pen tool options are set properly up here in the toolbar. We want to ensure that we're drawing a path and that the options here is set to combine shapes. Now I'm going to zoom in on this meter and put it in the center of the document just so we can see it more clearly. I've got the pen tool ready and notice the pen tool cursor. It looks like an old fashioned nib pen with an asterisk just to the lower right of the nib. The asterisk is very important and it indicates that we're ready to start drawing a path. As soon as I click anywhere on the canvas, we'll get an anchor point and the beginning of our path. So I'm going to choose this point in the upper left corner of the meter, right about there. And as soon as I click one time, I'll place the point. You can see it here in the corner and notice that we now have an active work path showing in the paths panel. Notice also that the cursor has changed. We no longer have the asterisk showing. This tells us that we're in the process of drawing a path and that the next point that we create will connect to the active path. I want to draw a straight line. So to do that, I'll just pick a point in the upper right corner of the meter here and I'll click once to create a corner anchor point. When I do, the pen tool connects the path between the two anchor points with a straight line. You can see the straight line here represented in the thumbnail of the work path. And now we're ready to add our next point. I'm going to choose the lower right corner here. And instead of just clicking to add a point, I'm going to intentionally make a common mistake and start dragging the cursor. When I do, we get some weird things happening. There are these control handles sticking out and the path is curved instead of straight. That isn't what we wanted here. We'll learn about this in a future lesson, but for now we're going to treat this as a mistake. And when we make a mistake, we can press Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo it. This will take us back to the point where we were. And once again, we're ready to add the next anchor point. I'll go ahead and add that point now without dragging. And now that we've established a third anchor point, we can see the shape of the path beginning to develop here in the work path thumbnail. Now, if we haven't placed this point exactly where we want it, we can use the arrow keys to nudge it one pixel at a time. 
So with the arrow keys, I can press the right arrow key to move it to the right, and the left arrow key to move it to the left, as well as up and down. If I hold the Shift key, I can move it 10 pixels at a time. There's another, even more flexible way to move this anchor point into position when you're in the middle of drawing a path, and that is to press and hold the Control key on Windows or the Command key on a Mac. When we do, the Pen Tool cursor temporarily changes to the Direct Selection tool, or the White Arrow tool as I like to call it. With the white arrow, we can select the anchor point and drag it around into position. As we drag, we see that the straight line path remains, connecting this anchor point to the previous one on our path. In fact, with this white arrow tool active, and while I'm still holding the control key down, we can even go back and adjust previous points on the same path if we don't like where they're located. As soon as I release the control key, I'm back to the pen tool cursor and we're ready to continue the path from the last point on the path. It will continue from this end even if this other point is selected. I'll go ahead and click the lower left corner of the meter to place my third point and that gives us three sides to our path and we're about ready to close this path and finish it off. Now what would happen if I accidentally click away from this path? If I do, it's deselected and it's no longer active, and it doesn't show on the canvas anymore. Even if I click back on the work path to make it active, and it does become visible here, there are no anchor points showing, and the cursor has the asterisk, indicating that I'm about to start drawing a new path. But I don't want to draw a new path, I want to resume drawing the one that I was drawing before. In order to do that, I'm going to place the cursor over the path near the last anchor point, and when I do, we see the cursor change. When it changes, I can click, and now we're back to work on this path and ready to continue drawing. Notice that the cursor no longer has the asterisk, so we know that we're now in the middle of extending this path. I'm going to go ahead and complete this rectangular path by placing the cursor over the first point. And when I place it over the first point, notice the change once again in the cursor we have a small circle which indicates that we're about to close this path. When I click here, we get the fourth side of our rectangle and the path is completely closed. Since this path is complete, the cursor once again shows the asterisk telling us that we're ready to start a new path. Here's our work path and we can see the rectangle shape here and this is ready to be used. Now we'll want to save this work path. The work path is a temporary path until we give it a name. If we were to click away from this work path and then start drawing a new path, the new path would completely replace our old work path. We've just lost the work that we did to create the rectangle defining the meter. So I'll undo that with Control Alt Z or Command Option Z on a Mac until I get back to my finished work path. And then I'll double click the name of the path here in the panel to bring up the Save Path dialog box. We'll give this a name and we'll call it Meter. And then I'll click OK. Now we can see that the path has a new name. If I deselect this path and start drawing a new path here, we can see that we've created a new work path, but our original meter path is preserved because we gave it a name. I'm going to drag this new path to the trash icon since we don't need it, and we're going to stick with this meter path. Now that we have this path, we're going to want to use this as a layer mask for the meter layers here in the Layers panel. This will allow us to see the meter on top of the background graphic. There are a couple of ways to load this path as a selection, as we saw in Part 1 of this series. One is to control click or command click on a Mac on this path thumbnail. When I hold the control key down, the cursor changes and clicking loads the path as a selection. Another way to do that, and I'll deselect with control D or command D, is to select this path to make it active and then click this icon here at the bottom of the path panel. This will load the path as a selection. And now with it loaded, we can go over to the layers panel and click this icon at the bottom to add a layer mask to the meters layer. 
As soon as we do, the new mask is created using the current selection. I'll zoom to fit, and we can move this around, and we can see that, sure enough, it's masked out pretty well. And if we zoom in closely, you can see that the selection edges are very crisp and very sharp. Pen tool paths provide a very smooth, very accurate selection all the way around, and this is characteristic of any selection created using a path. Now we've drawn our first path with the pen tool. We've created a rectangular shape and we've loaded it as a selection so that we could use it as a layer mask. This is a humble beginning, but from these techniques we're going to continue to build and we're going to continue to get better and better with the pen tool. I hope you'll join me next time for part three of this video series as we continue to push our skills forward using the pen tool in Photoshop. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips, tricks, and information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.